All right. Uh, good evening. Good evening and good evening. I want to welcome every one of us to, uh, to this uh, fellowship and to this time online. Thank you for joining us today and I uh, want to appreciate uh, the grace of God on our life and what he has been doing this year. This year is our year of elevation and we thank God that we have been experiencing a shifting in around us, in everything that is going on uh, in uh, around us, in our lives. We've been seeing the hand of God moving things around, and in spite of what is going on in the world around us, we thank God for elevating us, putting us in the right place, in the right position for us to live a life that is above all the storms and all the challenges uh, that the world is facing right now. So I want to welcome you today to this uh, service, and thank you for joining us from wherever you are joining, and like I've always said, there is no distance in the realm of the spirit, and so wherever you are, I want you to just uh, focus your attention on God, knowing that where you are, God is there with you, and his power is available uh, with you, wherever you may be right now, and I pray that today's service will be a blessing to you. I pray that the Lord himself will manifest his power and his glory upon our lives in the name of Jesus. So thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, today, we are going to have uh, prayer services, a little recording of the uh, prayer. Uh, after that, we will bring in uh, one of the brothers in the fellowship to uh, lead us in a time of worship and praise. Then finally, uh, finally, we are going to uh, have uh, uh, ourselves as a family to share uh, with the Lord and to worship Him in the name of Jesus. God bless you. All right, so I'm going to come back and then uh, just speak uh, to us the word that God has given us for today. But that God has given us for today, and uh, so please, uh, please uh, let's uh, put our hearts uh, into what God is uh, about to share with us today. My message today is titled, He Put a New Song in My Mouth. Okay, so please let me know that you can hear uh, right now because I, I heard that there was a problem with the volume. So can you hear me right now? Can you hear me right now? Please uh, let me know if you can hear right now. All right. All right. So uh, I'm going to bring uh, Brother Corinius Oludei to uh, speak and, and lead us in prayer right now. Brother Corinius, you are welcome. Thank you, Pastor Johnson, for that. And uh, good afternoon, Faith Life community. Uh, welcome to Online Church. I'm glad you're able to join us, uh, you know, today. I want us to start, you know, the, the prayer by first going to Psalm 137. Psalm 137. The Bible says, By the river of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For they, for their day that carried us away, captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us made saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget Aconian. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. And so, at this particular point, the Israelites were in, in captivity. And while in captivity, they are, those that held them captive required of them, they said, sing us a song. Sing us one of your songs. And, you know, the Israelites said, no, we won't sing any of our songs because we're in captivity. Although we remember it, we remember the songs of joy, the songs of thanks given to Yahweh, but we won't sing it because we're in captivity. And so the Bible says they actually hanged their harps, they hanged their instruments upon the wheels. But then you and I, this happened in the Old Testament, but you and I, 
we, we, we've seen track records of the saints singing even while they were in captivity. Paul and Silas, they sang while they were in prison. They worshiped God, they, they sang songs, and then the prison was shaken. The gates, the doors were open, and they were let out because of their worship, because of their praise. And so I don't know, whatever you might have been going through in life, Wherever I have held you captive, it might be circumstances, it might be situations. Maybe God has already even answered your, your prayer and then you have nothing else. It seems as if you have nothing else to pray for and you're not even worshipping God. But we're meant to worship God through our circumstances, through whatever might be going through on in your life. You shouldn't be like the Israelite who said, we won't sing the Lord's song while in captivity. We we're meant to be like Paul and Silas that sang, that worshipped God while they were going through the valley of shadow of death. But they feared no evil. There's this song that says, Hallelujah, that's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah, that's what my song will be, that's what my song will be, that's what my song will be. I hope that will be your song in whatever you might be going on, might be going on in your life today. Then the, you know, uh, the, the same person sang this song that says, For it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. First it was fragrance, and then it turned to fire. My worship, your worship is a weapon against the enemy, against the different challenges you face in life. And so the Bible says unto us in Psalm 96, All sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all they heard. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. And so I want us to begin to pray today, to begin to declare, to begin to thank God. Because he is good, he is God. Whatever you might be going through, regardless of whatever you might be going through in life, I want you to begin to adore the name of the Lord right now. Father, we thank you, we worship you. We adore you because you're God. Thank you because you're king. You reign and you rule, oh God. There's not like unto you. Thank you because you are helping ages past. I hope for years to come. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the gifts of life. Thank you for our family members. Thank you for faith life community. Thank you for everyone that is here. Thank you for sound health. Thank you for what you've done in our life. Thank you for what you're about to do. We adore you. We magnify your name, oh God. We say, be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Mali karabarababashida. Yegebete libokoto likere berebete shida. Eshkepete libokoto likere berebete shida. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. And so wherever you might be going through in life, don't stay in there. Someone said it, right? You know, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Continue walking through it. Because there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And so our God is good, our God is great. And He reigns over everything. You reign, you reign, hello him, you reign, you reign, you reign, hell shada, you reign, you reign, you reign, Adonai, you reign. And so for someone you might be, maybe your songs in the past have been songs of sorrow, songs of depression. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. That means God wants to give you a new song. And so I want you to begin to declare right now that everyone here, that will begin to sing new songs, songs of joy, songs of praise, songs of testimonies, of breakthrough. 
that God will give us those songs, prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we decree upon everyone here today, we declare, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will begin to sing songs of healing, songs of deliverance, oh God, songs of breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus, songs of joy. Even though sorrow may last for the night, Lord, I decree that morning shall come in God into their lives, that there will be brightness, oh God, that, that the light of God will break forth in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Malisha kete libre kete eli karabara babashida. Eskepete ni mokoto li kere bere bete sida. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. And that's Psalm 60, 96. Verse 3 and 4 says, Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared among all gods. And so Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the message of the kingdom to all creations. And so that means that message is not only for living uh, things. It's not only meant for humanity. It's meant for everything, even inanimate objects. And so that means the, the, the message of the kingdom, the glory of God, the Zoe life of God, that dominion God has given unto you, when you come into an environment, to an atmosphere, that is full of depression, that is full of darkness, that is full of sickness, you come and you begin to declare the light of God to begin to break forth. That is you preaching into that particular atmosphere. It might be your job, it might be your health, it might be your career. You begin to preach to your health. Amen? You, you speak life into your health. You speak life into your family. You speak life into your relationship. You speak life into your circumstances. I want us to begin to declare today. As we begin to declare, as we begin to speak life, as we begin to preach to our circumstances, that the life of God will begin to radiate in them. That there will be light, there will be light illumination. Pray in the mighty name Father, we decree, O oh God, upon everyone here today, O oh God, we speak into their atmospheres, we speak into their lives, into their careers, into their family, into their finances, into their spiritual life. I decree, Lord, in the mighty name that the resurrection power of God will come upon them in the mighty name That everything that is dead, Lord, will go into the valley of dry bones, O oh God, and we begin to prophesy. Ye bones begin to live in the mighty name of Maja gabatashida, eskepete libo koto liya karabarababashida. That your life will not remain the same today because you've encountered God. For someone today has come to Shiloh to have an encounter with God. And I pray that the God of Shiloh, he will answer your prayers today. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Over to you, Pastor Johnson. All right. Thank you, Corinthians, for uh, leading us in that uh, prayer session. Uh, now we are going to have uh, Brother Ajibola and Sister Juliana Olude to lead us in a time of uh, worship. So please welcome our Brother Ajibola and Sister Juliana. Amen. It's a beautiful Sunday today, a time to spend in God's presence. And I invite you to join us as we praise the name of the Lord. January is our month of prophecy and praise, and we'll be declaring today through prophecies the words of the Lord of our lives and with the praises of our God in our mouth. So let us uh, lift up our hearts to God today as we praise His name and as we declare His words of our lives. Thou, O Lord, Thou, O Lord, you must 
Thank you so much, uh, Brother Ajibala and uh, Sister Juliano, for uh, that wonderful session of worship. And uh, I pray that uh, God's praise will forever remain in our mouth this uh, year. I pray that throughout this year we will have reasons to celebrate and to declare His praise and to declare His faithfulness in our life. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to bow our heart as we pray. Uh, this this uh, afternoon, let's bow our heart as we pray and uh, before we go into the world. Father, we thank you and we bless you. 
We thank you, God, for this privilege that we have to know you. And we thank you for the entrance of your word. It gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And so, Lord, as we come into your word, as we come to fellowship together, as we come to listen to your spirit, we pray that your word will come with accuracy, with power. And, Lord, it will bring deliverance. It will bring restoration. Lord, it will take us to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus. We pray for a unique experience with your spirit. And we pray, O oh God, that, Lord, there will be a transformation in our heart. And we pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you will change everything around us to align properly to the purpose of your will for our life. We give you praise, Lord, and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So tonight, I want to share with us uh, a message that I titled, He put a new song in my mouth. He put a new song in my mouth. And so we've been looking at the book of Psalms. We've been looking at some of the experiences that David chronicled in the book of Psalms. Because in the New Testament, Apostle Paul admonishes us, he said we should encourage one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing uh, melodies in our heart unto the Lord. He gave us that admonition because some of the experiences that were uh, registered in the book of Psalms, they actually uh, allows us to see God in the midst of challenges. It allows us to understand how to go through different uh, challenges of life and come out successfully. And whether as individuals or globally as a world, we know that the whole world is facing a crisis, the whole world is facing a challenge right now, but in the midst of it, God said He is elevating us above the challenges. He is lifting us above anything that is going on in the world. So that means no matter what is going on around you, no matter what is going on in your life, God's word for us in this year, is that it's our season of elevation. We are riding on the wing of the Holy Ghost above any storms in our life. So today we want to speak on He put a new song in my mouth. And that is from Psalm 40. We are going to be looking at Psalm 40. from. We will read verse 1 to 5. Psalm 40 from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 40 and verses 1 to 5. Uh, Psalm 40, 1 to 5. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. In fact, uh, one translation says, horrible pit. Out of the mud and mud, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place uh, to stand. Verse 3. He said, he put a new song in my mouth. I want you to take note of that. He put a new song in my mouth. Hymns of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, those who turn aside to false God. Then verse 5. He said, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you also planned for us, none can compare with you. Were, were I to speak and tell of your deeds, there will be too many to declare. There will be too many to declare. I want you to take note of that. He said, many are the wonders you have done, the things you also plan to do. So what you have already done and what you are also planning, there are so many. If I were to speak and tell of your deeds, there will be too many to declare. There will be too many to declare. And I want to assure you that God has so many wonderful things, so many great things that He has already planned for us for this year. So that's why when we uh, function, when we stand on the rock or the elevated position where He has uh, placed us, we will begin to see all the wonderful things that God has planned. We will begin to see all the things that God is about to do. We will begin to see all the things that God has already done. So our topic for today is, He put a new song in my mouth. He put 
a new song in my mouth. Now, so this particular psalm was also written by David. Now, we've, in the past two, uh, two weeks, we've looked at some of the songs that were written by David. And in, in the first one that we had, we look at the song that David wrote when Saul was coming against him. Okay, he wrote the song, he said, magnify the Lord with me. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He said, magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. So he wrote that particular song when he was running after his life, when Saul was chasing him. Saul was running after his life. And that was when he, he looked at everything around him, chaotic. Fear enveloping everything, uh, enveloping him around. But in the midst of it, he said, no, I'm not going to magnify my problem. I'm actually going to magnify God. Because whatever you magnify is what gets amplified. So when you magnify God, you put God above all your problems. And all your problems will become smaller in your imagination. Because whatever you magnify is what uh, uh, is magnified in your perspective. So when you magnify God, then your problem becomes smaller in your view. So that's the first uh, uh, part that we look at. The second part that we look at last week was Psalm 3. Psalm 3, where David said, Many are the foes that are around me. He said, But thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me, the glory and the lifter of my head. That's from Psalm 3. And he wrote that particular song when his son, Absalom, was plotting a coup to dethrone him. So David was a man that the scripture described as a man that is after God's heart. He's a man that God actually anointed. He's a man that God actually worked with to establish his kingdom. He's a man that actually have a heart for God. He's a man that was a, a worship leader. He's a man that, that sang on instrument. He's a man that danced, that, that, that dedicated his entire life. For, unto God. But it's not a man that is also without challenges of life. The only qualifications that you need to have challenges is to just be alive. As long as you are alive, there will be challenges. But the only thing is, in the midst of the challenges, as a believer, we have a positioning that is above those challenges. Every activity or challenges of life, they are under our feet. And so we've got to recognize that and function from that position of authority where God has uh, put, put us. You see, our position is a spiritual elevation in the spirit. And when we function from that uh, realm of positioning that God has put us, there is nothing that the enemy can throw against us. There is no challenge that can come in life that will terrify us. By faith, we can ride above every storm. Because we are standing on the rock. We are standing from an elevated uh, position. So David wrote this particular Psalms when he was in the pit. And the scripture didn't really give us exactly what kind of pit was he when he wrote the Psalm. But if you read it further later, you will see that there are actually um, some mention about the fact that he committed some sins and then he, he got some uh, consequences of, of such sins. Now, so you can be in a pit because you did something wrong, because you did a wrongdoing. So maybe you are, you are, you are getting the consequences of, of your sin. So sin, one of the reasons why God asked believers to live a holy life, to, to, to follow God and not go after uh, uh, all the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the, and the deceitfulness of riches of life is because sin has consequences. Even though by grace we have been saved, but when you do things that doesn't line up with the God's instruction in his word, it puts you at the mercy of the enemy. And there are consequences. So David might be in the pit, one, probably because he did something wrong. We didn't know. But if you read it further, that same chapter, you will see that he actually attests to the fact that he did something. So the other reasons why you, somebody can be in the pit is when you are under attack of the enemy. 
Let me tell you, as long as you are in this world, as a believer, the enemy is not your friend. <laughs> there, are, there are, I mean, there are people that gang up. Uh, there are people that the enemy use to persecute believers. And that has been the experience of the church from the early days. From the early days of the church, there had been persecution. In fact, Paul spent most of his years in prison. Not because he did anything wrong. The only thing that he did as his crime was preaching the gospel. So, in this world too, Jesus said we will face many persecution. We will face many tribulation. So, you might also be in, in the pit as a result of attack. As a result of, of attack. And that was the case of Joseph. Joseph didn't do anything wrong. The only thing he did was that he has a vision. He has a dream that God has given him. And the next thing is that his brothers that were supposed to collaborate and work with him, they conspired against him and they threw him into the pit. They said, let's see what will become of his dream. So he didn't do anything wrong. It was a consequence of other people's action towards him that put him into that pit. So he was in the pit not because he did anything. He was in the pit because of other people's uh, uh, wrongdoing. And we see the same thing with uh, Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 38, Jeremiah was thrown into the pit. Not because he did anything wrong, but he gave a prophetic word to the king. He gave a prophetic word to the people of his days. In Jeremiah 38, he told them what God said. And they didn't like it. Because of that, the officers around the king, they conspired against him and they threw him into the pit. So, being in the pit can be as a result of uh, what you have done wrong, which uh, you have to probably uh, uh, deal with. It might also be as a result of what others have done unto you. So, what is a pit? A pit is just... Um, the experiences that we have in life that doesn't correlate with God's plan and purpose for our life. So some of the pit experiences might be uh, maybe you have some challenges with your health. Maybe you have some, uh, you, maybe you lost your job. Some of the experiences that people are going through during this session of COVID look like they are in the lowest of the lowest point of their life. So maybe you lose your job. <laughs> or maybe somebody that was a friend, that was a former friend, somebody that you are close with, disappoint you and turn against you. Okay? Maybe you have maybe struggle in relationship. Or maybe you have a rebellious children. Okay? That turn out to, to be attacking you just like David had in his own time. Or maybe you have some other overwhelming problem that is causing you to have sleepless nights. Now, when you are in the pit, you are in your lowest of lowest. And sometimes when you are in the pit, one of the things that you begin to see is that it, it, it limits your vision. You cannot see further. You are confused. You cannot see uh, which direction you are going in life. It limits your ability to see because when you are in the pit, you are in the lowest point. And for you to be able to see vision clearly, you need to be in an elevated position. So... A pit limits your position or your, your vision about life. And when you are also in the pit, you feel, you feel disappointed. You, you feel depressed. You see, David said, he rescued me from an horrible pit. He used the word horrible to describe the experience. So it's not a pleasant uh, experience that he had when he was in the pit. So when you are in the pit, it represents a dark place where there is no light, where you cannot see clearly when you are in the pit, okay? When you are in pit, the pit. But you see, God said, no matter what pit you are in, whether it's as a result of what you, a mistake that you make or as a result of what other people have done, God said he wants to lift you from that pit. So when we look at what David uh, did here, then we can see how God lifted people up from the pit, from whatever areas they might be going through uh, a dark moment in their life. God specializes in elevating and bringing people up. So the first thing that we will see from here is that David tells us how his elevation comes. 
How did he get out of the pit? The first thing that David did that positioned him for elevation, that positioned him to receive that lifting was to wait on the Lord. To wait on the Lord. That's in verse 1. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Now, to wait on the Lord means to spend time privately alone with God. To spend time alone with God in fellowship. And that's why the key point for us to elevation is our intimacy with God. Our intimacy with God. So he spent time in, with God, waiting on him. He spent time in a place of prayer because if you look at it, he said, I, I cried unto the Lord. During the time that he was waiting, it's his time of prayer. It's a time of fellowship with God. It's a time of building his relationship with God. You see, when you are in the pit, one of the things that you need to do is to ensure that you didn't uh, lose your fellowship with God. You see, one thing the enemy wants you to do, especially when you face challenges of life, is to question God. Is to turn away from God. But that is where your strength is supposed to come from. So when you are in the pits, when you are in the pit, that's the time that you need to build a strong connection with God, a strong relationship with God, because that's the only uh, hope that you have. That's the only leverage that you have against every work of the enemy, against every attack of the enemy. When your relationship with God is unshaken, unshaken, unshaken by uh, the challenges that you have faced in life, then God will show up for you. You remember the three Hebrew children. They were thrown into the fire and immediately they put them in the fire because they want them to compromise and, and deny God and worship uh, the, 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 another God. But they said, no, we are not going to bow down. Their faith was unshakable. They held on to their faith. And while the enemy was still attacking them because of their faith, when they threw them into the, into the fire, the fire that was supposed to burn them didn't burn them. They actually survived that fire because there was a fourth man that joined them in the fire. So when you are also intimate with God, when you also build a close connection with God, there is no weapon that is formed against you that will be able to prosper. There is no power of the enemy. There is no attack of the enemy that will prosper. There is nothing going on around you that will be able to bring you down. Because God on your side, God with you will bring you up out of whatever challenges you are facing. So God didn't say we won't go through challenges. But he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So the first key to elevation, the first key to elevation is waiting on the Lord. Spending time when you are waiting is the time that you are spending to uh, pray, ask God for guidance, ask God for direction, receiving strength, receiving vision from God. Those are the times that God begins to give you direction on what you need to do. So he said, I wait patiently for the Lord. You see, one of the core elements of faith is patience. Patience. You have to wait until God answer, until God respond. That's what Habakkuk did. Habakkuk in chapter 2, he said, I will stand upon my watch tower and I will watch what he's going to say unto me. Because everything around Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 1 was chaos. He saw chaos everywhere around him. And he said, I'm going to stand upon my watch tower and wait for what he's going to say to me. And it was in that position, it was in that elevated position spiritually, that God said, write the vision, make it plain. So, when you wait on God, it's a time that you just spend to receive from God. Now, waiting on God doesn't mean you are not doing anything. It doesn't mean <laughs> you, are, you, are, you, are not, you are not taking any action. But it just means you set time aside to listen to God for guidance and for direction about your life. And in that point, that's when God re reveals himself to you. He reveals what he's doing to you and he reveals what he's about to do to you. And then you can come from that place with more strength. And you can then mount up against the challenges on wings like ego. So God's 
expects that this year, as member of the Faith Life community, intimacy with him, personal time with him, is one of the things that God desires of us this year. Because that's the key to our elevation. Now, the second thing that David mentioned is that God is the lifter. God is the lifter. Okay, God is the lifter. So he said, he lift me. He lift me. You see, lifting. I remember a time that God gave me an illustration. I was going to the office. My office was on the 11th floor on a 23 uh, tower building, high tower building in Toronto. And then as I was going to the office, I wanted to take the staircase. You know, there was uh, um, uh, the, the lift, the lift, the elevator, and then there is the staircase. And God said, which one do you prefer to get to your office? Do you prefer the staircase or the lift? I said, ah, I don't, I don't have a choice. <laughs> as long as the lift is working, I want to be on the lift. Why? Because the lift doesn't require any effort on my part. The lift takes me the moment I enter him. But if it has to be the staircase, it will be a lot of pain on my back walking to the 11th floor and it will take longer time for me to get there so that is the difference between when god lifts you up and when man is lifting you up you say it takes a long time for you if you are going to do it but when god is the lifter when you put your hope and your trust in god to lift you up god will accelerate your promotion he will accelerate your rising he will put his favor on your life he will manifest his goodness it will manifest his faithfulness. So that's why when God's eye is on you, God can take you to any level within a short time. So that's why our hope and our confidence is in God as the lifter of our head, as the lifter of us from the pit. So no matter what the circumstances of life may, may have done to you, no matter what the challenges of life may have done to you, maybe you have lost your job, maybe you have lost your health, maybe your situation has been declared hopeless. It doesn't take God years to restore. It doesn't take God years to bring back all the things that are lost. Because God is the restorer. He said, He lift me up. He lift me up. In verse 2, He brought me up out of the horrible pit and out of the merry clay and set my feet upon the rock and established my going. These are the things that God does. And to me, is the act of His grace. He started the whole agenda about our life at salvation. But every day of our life is a new experience of God's elevation and lifting. Every day. Every day. Every day we experience that lifting. In our job, in our career, in our business, in every area of our life, there is a lifting. Every time. Why? Because the moment we spend time with God, He releases His strength upon us. And with that strength, we can mount up with wings like ego. So this year, God is going to surprise you. God is going to take you to a new level. I want you to have that expectation because it's very important that you expect that from God. It's very important. Your expectation is a magnet to receive elevation from God. And that's why the world may have written up this year. The world may have written up what is possible this year. But God has great things that he's doing in this year. So I want you to have that expectation. That's why one of the uh, things that David wrote in Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14, he said, I will wait patiently on the Lord. And then in verse, um, I think verse 14, he said, um, he said uh, in verse 14, he said, I will expect to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, I will expect to see the goodness on the Lord in the land of the living. Let me read it. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. He said, I will have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So it means he's saying that I will have fainted. I will have given up unless I have believed. So believing that you will see elevation uplifting this year is very crucial. He said, I will have fainted unless I have believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then in verse 14, he said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, 
and it has strengthened thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So I want you to just know that God's, uh, God's dealing with your life is not dependent on what is going on in the world. So don't let the report that you see in the news or in the world dictate your expectation. Have high expectation in God this year because God is the lifter. It's not man. It's God that is going to lift you up. In the midst of challenges, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of the storm that is going on in the world, God said there is a way for you. He will make a way in the wilderness and it will cause rivers to flow in the desert. So your situation is not dependent on what is going on in the world. Your situation is dependent on who is in charge of lifting you up. And that is God. So is the lifter of our head. Number three thing that I want you to know from that verse is that elevation is about repositioning. Elevation is about repositioning. So God took him from the pit, but he put him on a solid rock. So there is a, there is a repositioning. There was a former state. There was a former position, which is the pit. In that pit, it was a horrible experience. It was a Mary Clay. It's, it's like he's sinking low, low. But God repositioned and bring him to a new level. You see, God is also shifting you. He's also bringing you to a new position. He's bringing you to a new position. So he's putting him on a rock. And anytime you see the word rock, it means Christ. Christ is the rock. Christ is the rock. You see, when you are going through a storm in life, you need a solid place. You need a place of stability. You need a place that you can be assured that you are not going to, 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 to go with a storm. And that's what a rock provides. In the middle of the storm, you have a rock where you can anchor your faith, where you can anchor your hope. And Christ is that rock. That rock cannot fail. That rock will keep you uh, uh, in, in a good position. One thing that the rock gives to you is it gives you vision. It gives you revelation. That's why you remember in Matthew chapter 18 when Jesus told uh, Peter. Peter said, he, he asked Peter, he said, who, who am I? Who do men say that I am? He asked all these disciples. And Peter said, by the leading of the Spirit, Peter said, you are Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven, he said, upon this rock, what, what was the rock? Revelation that he received. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. You see, when the church walk in revelation, when the church walk in divine uh, inspiration by the Spirit, there is nothing that is going on. There is nothing the enemy plan that can succeed against the church. That's why in your life too, when you have revelation, when you are on the rock, when you are on the rock, your vision is bigger. Your vision is clearer. And when you have that vision, there is nothing that is going on in the world that will be able to stand against you. So a solid rock is a place where we have safety. It's a place where we have security. It's a place where we have vision. Because one of the elements of being in the pit is that your vision is limited. Because you are in an enclosed environment. But when God brings you out and reposition you on the rock, then your vision becomes bigger. Your vision becomes clearer. Your vision becomes elevated. And people will be wondering, in the midst of this downtown, when people are saying there is a casting down, why are you saying there is a lifting up? Why are you having bigger dreams? Why are you having bigger vision? It is because you are in a different position. It is because you are not operating from the same position that other people are. You are operating from an elevated position. You are far above principalities and powers and dominions and every work of the enemy. Everything is under your feet, and that means you have authority over them. You can command the storm to cease, and they will, they will obey you because you are functioning from a position of authority. So elevation is about repositioning. So God has repositioned you, and I want you to know that you need to function from that position that God has put you. You need to function from that position that God has put you. All right, number four, when God put a new song in your mouth, it means that you will need to stop singing old songs 
that you sang when you are in the pit. When God put a new song in your mouth, it means the whole song is obsolete. When God brings in something new, it means he, he, he discovered that the old song is obsolete. He need, you need something new. So when God gives you a new thing, he wants you to forget the memory of what is in your past. That's why in uh, Isaiah chapter 43, he said, Remember not the former things, neither should you consider the things of, of old. He said, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it will spring forth. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in your desert. So when you have a new song, and this song comes from revelation, it comes from inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When you have a new song, then it means the old song that you are singing, you need to shift, you need to change it. Many people are believers, but they are still singing the old song they sing before they become a believer. You see, one of the things that should happen when you become a Christian is that you need to renew your mind with new information. New information. That information is different from what you used to believe, what you used to think, your perspective about your life. Because God has repositioned you right now. You are in an elevated position. So you need to have a new thinking. You need to have a new mind. You need to have a new perspective. In fact, three areas that you need to change. Number one, you need to take, change how you think. Your thinking has to change. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So until you change the way you think about issues. Many people look at challenges and they see it like obstacle. But people who are victorious, people who are winners, they see challenges as opportunity. Because in the midst of every opportunity of life, there is actually an opportunity for you. So this crisis that the world is going through now is not for my downfall. It's for my elevation. That's a mindset. That's a thinking. I'm not running away from it. Every day I keep thinking, what solution can I bring to solve problems in the world? Do you know that in the midst of COVID that we are in, there are organizations and businesses that are making more money than they have ever made in their life. There are people that are, that are more richer during this time than before. So you need to elevate your thinking because you are in a new position. Don't sing the same old song that you are singing. Sing a new song. That's the first thing. Your thinking has to change. Number two thing that needs to change is your words. What you are saying. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. You are the architect of your future. The Bible says the mouth is like a ruder. It determines the direction that your life is going to, to go. So whatever you are saying about yourself is going to determine the direction that your life is going to say. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. And in uh, Job chapter 22, verse 29 that we read, he said, when men say, there is a casting down. We say, there is a lifting up. It means we are saying not what the world is saying. We are saying what God has already declared about us. So what God has declared about us this year is that is our year of elevation. That should be what you are declaring about your business. That is what you are declaring about your career. That is what you are declaring about your health. That is what you are declaring about your relationship. That is what you are declaring about your family. That is what you are declaring about your spiritual life. What you say is very, very vital to where you are going to end up. So your thinking must change. Your talking must change. The third thing that must change is your action. Your action. What you are doing. Your behavior must line up with what you believe. You see, behavior is a byproduct of belief. If you want to know what somebody believes, just look at what he's doing. Look at what he's doing. So if somebody believes in God's report, what God is doing, you will see it in the actions that the person is taking. If you don't believe it, then you will see it in the action that you are taking. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of James, it's like a man that does not take action. It's a man that looks at himself in the mirror, but he forgets how he looks. So faith without an action is dead. Faith and belief without an action is dead, being alone. So what action are you going to do? What are you going to do differently this year? What steps are you going to take differently this year? Your action must line up with what God's word said about us for this year. If you are expecting an elevation, then your action must show that you are preparing yourself for that elevation to come. So, 
God wants to put a new, a new song in our mouth, but we have to also trash all the old songs that we have sung. All the songs of pity, all the songs of playing victim, all the songs of, oh, it's because I don't have anybody to help me. That's why things are very hard. That's why things that. No, you don't need anybody's help. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That's the only one that you need. When God is on your side, there is nothing that you cannot achieve. With God on your side, there is nothing that can come against you. So don't look, don't look like a victim. Don't look like somebody who is helpless. Put your hope and your trust in God. And in the midst of challenges, God will come through for you. Now, God might use human being to help you. God might use human being to help you. But God knows who he wants to use. For example, when uh, uh, Joseph was thrown into the pit, he used Judah, one of his brothers that actually conspired together. He used Judah to make a suggestion that they should take him out. When they also threw Jeremiah into the pit in Jeremiah 38, one of the officers was the one that God used to bring him out. So God can use anybody, but your focus is on God, not on man. So don't play pity party. Remove all those old songs. Remove all those old songs and put a new song that God has put in your mouth. Number five, which is the last thing that I want to share with us about God putting a new song in your mouth, is that your song is a testimony to others about what God has done and what He is doing, and it's a prophetic declaration of what God is about to do. Okay, let me put that again. Your song is a prophetic, your new song is a prophetic, is a declaration or testimony about what God has already done, what God is doing now, and what God is going to do. So you can sing a new song in those three areas. When you are declaring a testimony about what God has done, or a testimony about what God is doing currently, or a, testimony, uh, or a declaration about what God is doing in the future. If you look at verse 5 of, uh, uh, that, um, of Psalm 40, verse 5, in verse 5, David said, Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. That is what God has already done. Many are the works that you have done. He said, uh, and thy thoughts which are towards us, they cannot be reckoned up in order oh sorry he said many O lord i my god are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thought which are to us world they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee if i would declare and speak of them they are more than can be numbered in fact in the uh, in the niv translation he said many O lord and the wonders you have done he said the things you planned for us this is what he has not even done he is already declaring to us what he's going to do. So it means the things that God has in plan, they are so numerous, they are so many, that it should keep us excited in this present moment, and we should sing a new song unto him. You see, you don't need to wait until there is manifestation of all the things. By the time you see with the eyes of the Spirit what God said he's doing, it brings a song of joy unto you. So your song is now an expression of the prophetic word. That's why this month is our month of prophecy and praise. Because we hear what God said is doing. We have already heard what God said is doing. He's elevating us. And the response that we give to him is hallelujah. Thank God for the new things that is happening. Thank God for the ways that God is breaking for us. Thank God for the new things that God is about to do. We look at the past. We see the handwriting of God what he has already done. We look at our present. We see what God is also doing in our life. And we look at the future. We see greater things that he has in store for us. And what our response is, is to sing a new song. David said, if I had to talk about all the things that you have planned for my future, they are too numerous. They are too much to, to, to be numbered. And that's the same thing that we have in Isaiah chapter 42 that we read during our seven days fasting and prayer, Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9 and 10. God said the whole things have already accomplished. New things I'm already declaring right now. He said before they spring forth, I'm telling you about them. Then in verse 10, he says, sing a new song unto the Lord. 
So a new song emanates from our awareness of what God is doing. Let me tell you, what awareness do you have about what God is doing in your life right now? What is it that God has revealed to you that is doing in your life this year? That should form the focus of your vision and your plan for this year. Don't look into the world to determine how you are going to plan your, 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 your life for this year. Look into the revelations that God gives to you about what he's doing. It is until we have a revelation from God, that's when we can write down our plans. That's why before Habakkuk was asked to write the vision, he received a vision from God. He received a vision from God. And that vision is what he wrote down. He wrote it down, what God is doing. So what is it that God is doing in your life? What is it that God is inspiring you to step out and do this year? What is it that God said he's going to do in your family this year? What is it that God said he's going to do about your business? You see, sometimes when you have a vision from God, you look crazy to the people of the world. Because God's vision will always be bigger than whatever is going on in your environment. And it will look impossible to men. But we know that with God, nothing is impossible. When Elizabeth and uh, 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 Mary, when they have an encounter with the Spirit of God, in Luke chapter 1, uh, from verse uh, 1 and up, up to about uh, verse 40, 52, when they have an encounter with the angel that came to announce that they will have a baby, you know, the two of them gather together and they start singing unto the Lord. So what song are you going to sing that will reveal what God said is doing? Because your song are expression of what God has revealed to you. So God said he will put a new song in your mouth. Whatever song you have been singing in the past when you are in the pits, God said he's elevating your position. He's repositioning you so that you can sing a new song unto him. I pray that the Lord would prove himself faithful in our life, it will take you out of every pit. It will take you out of every uh, down, downcast. It will take you out of every experiences that doesn't line up with his word and his will for your life. It will elevate you into a new position in the name of Jesus. I want us to just uh, close our eyes as we pray tonight. I want us to just pray tonight. The Lord, this year, this year, I will sing a new song. This year, I will sing a new song unto you. I will sing a new song, a song of praise, a song of appreciation, a song of adoration. Lord, your praise will not depart from my mouth. This year, Lord, in every area of my life, you will put a new song. I will have a new experience. I will have an elevated experience this year. Lord, as you elevate me from every pit, as you elevate me to a new level, as you elevate me to a new position, Lord, I receive divine lifting. I receive divine lifting. Lord, you will hold my hands up. You will cause me to mount up with wings like eagle in the name of Jesus. I want you to declare it with your mouth. I want you to declare it with your mouth that this year I receive a lifting in every area of my life, in my business, in my marriage, in my career, in my job. Lord, I receive a lifting this year in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, I trust you, God, that Lord, this year you will lift up my head. You will lift up my head in every area. I receive a new song in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to pray. You know, during our seven days fasting and prayer, the Lord led me that we should pray against every evil work of the enemy. And that's very important. There are evil imaginations, evil work of the enemy that can bring people into the pits. I've had people that are very innocent. They are, they are doing what they are supposed to do, but some people lie against them. You see, the enemy is after everyone that's standing for God. And I want you to pray right now that, Lord, you will deliver me from every evil work of the enemy. This year, Lord, no weapon that is formed against me and my family will be able to prosper. Lord, I decree and I declare that every evil imagination, every evil work of the enemy, Lord, I decree and I declare, oh God, that, Lord, you will deliver me in the name of Jesus. I pray that, Lord, you will build an edge of protection 
over my life, over my family this year. Lord, no evil will come near our territory. Lord, a thousand may fall by our right hand, ten thousand by our left hand. With only our eyes, we will, we will see it. We will not, it will not come near us in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that there will be an edge of protection over my family, over my loved ones, over every member of our ministry this year in the name of Jesus. You will deliver us from every evil work. You will preserve us unto your heavenly kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your protection over us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I want us to pray for those who might be sick. You see, people might be in the pits. They might be in the pit because of sickness. Because of sickness. Okay? A pit experience is a horrible experience. It, an experience that, that breaks your heart. I want us to pray for anyone that might be uh, sick. That might be sick. Maybe as a result of COVID or any other experience that they have. I want us to just pray for healing for them. That the Lord will lift them up from that sick position. That position of, uh, of, of, of sickness. The Lord will raise them up. It will lift them. Let's pray that the resurrection power of God will rest upon their life and bring them out of every sickness. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. I want you to just decree everyone that is going through sickness, whether diagnosed sickness or whatever thing that they might be facing, I don't care what name they call it. I want you to just pray that Lord right now will decree healing upon them. Healing upon them from their head to their toes. Lord, everyone that is going through one sickness or the other one ailment or the other, they have tried different options, different medicine. It seems nothing is working out. Lord, from this moment, we decree healing upon them in the name of Jesus. We decree healing upon them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want us to pray this year that, Lord, you will expand my vision. Expand my vision because your new position is on the rock. Your new position is an elevated position on the rock. When you are in that elevated position, you can see clearly. You can see vision. You can see things that others are not seeing. I want you to pray that this year, you will expand my vision. You will expand my vision. Lord, change my perspective, my thinking. Elevate my thinking so that I can align with your will for my life. I can align with your purpose for my life. Lord, elevate my thinking. Elevate my, my view, elevate my vision for my career, for my business, for my, for my personal life, for my family. Lord, you will elevate my vision. Lord, I'm not moved by what I see in the natural. I'm moved by your word. I'm moved by your direction. I'm, I'm moved by your guidance for my life. Lord, elevate my position so that I can see the things that you are doing in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord, that, Lord, this year I will align with your vision for my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to pray finally that in the midst of darkness, you will shine. In the midst of darkness, you will shine. You see, darkness will cover the hearts, but in the midst of it, God said, we are going to shine. I want you to pray that this year you are going to shine. You are going to shine. God will elevate you. You will shine like darkness, in the, like light in the midst of darkness. God will give you vision so that you can shine like light in the midst of darkness. Lord, this year, I pray, O oh God, the Lord, you will elevate me, O oh God. The Lord, I will be able to shine in the midst of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed father lord i decree and i prophesy according to your word lord into the life of everyone that is listening right now and everyone that is watching this video i ask right now that lord in the name of jesus you are going to put a new song into their mouth i pray oh god that lord you will elevate them you will bring them to a new realm of favor to a new realm of divine uplifting to a new ref of divine uh, divine positioning so that Lord everything about their life will speak to the goodness of God will speak to the grace of God will speak to the favor of the Lord in the name of Jesus Lord you will take them beyond their own imagination you will take them beyond where they even thought they could ever be Lord thank you dear father because you are shifting things for us you are bringing us to a new season Thank you for putting a new song in our mouth. We give you praise because your praise shall continually be in our mouth. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining. Uh, a couple of announcements. A couple of announcements. On Wednesday, uh, that's our prayer meeting day. Please join us on Wednesday as we pray. This month is our month of praise and prophecy. And it's a month that we sing a new song. God said he will put a new song in our mouth. And we declare that upon our life, upon our family, and upon our loved ones. So please join us on Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. for uh, a time of prayer uh, at 7.15. Uh, you can join us via Zoom. The Zoom ID is available on our uh, Facebook page. The Zoom ID is 350-807-9127. So you can join us on Wednesday. Then if you have any prayer requests, please uh, we want to pray with you and trust God together with you. The Bible says uh, when two or three agree together in his name, it's there. So when we come in agreement, I mean, we have more power and more effect for our prayer. So if you have anything that you want us to agree with you in prayer, huh, please know that you can send your prayer request to our prayer team. Uh, you'll see the, a link on top of this video where you can actually uh, fill a form and just submit a prayer request. Then also, if God has done something in your life, don't keep quiet. Let's share that testimony so that we can encourage other people that uh, need encouragement. So you can go to uh, faithlifecommunity.org slash testimony and share your testimony. All right. And finally, if you gave your life to Christ today and or this is the first time of joining us online, please uh, let us know and we'll love to connect with you. So you can go to faithlifecommunity.org slash let Ivan connect. Let Ivan connect. You see the link on top of this video. You can connect with us and we would like to pray with you and encourage you uh, on, in your journey of faith. Finally, uh, uh, giving, if you want to give uh, your offering uh, today, you can go to faithlifecommunity.org slash give uh, to give. If you are in Canada, you can give through Interact. Uh, uh, faithlifegiving at gmail.com is our Interact uh, uh, giving. So you can give through Interact or you can give online uh, from faithlifecommunity.org slash give. And uh, Thank you so much for, for giving to support the work of the church and the ministry. And we pray that the Lord will reward all your labor of love in Jesus' mighty name. We also want you to follow us on all our social media. So we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, and we are also on YouTube. Please subscribe to all our channels and please invite your friends and loved ones to also uh, follow us on those channels. And the Lord will be and with you and keep you. So before we go, I want us to just uh, uh, share the uh, close in prayer before we go. Father, I decree for everyone that is listening to me right now as they go into this new week. Lord, I pray that your grace will be upon them. And I pray that this month they will experience a lifting in areas that they have been cast down. Lord, I pray that there will be a lifting up for them this week. I pray, O oh God, that Lord, you will renew their strength like that of an eagle so that they can mount up with wings. Lord, I pray that this week, O oh God, everything will begin to shift around them. In areas that they have been low, that they have been down, Lord, I pray from this week, there is a shifting in the realm of the Spirit for them. And I pray, O oh God, that Lord, you will elevate them. And pray that, Lord, this week you will put a new song into their mouth. And I pray that, Lord, they will sing a song of praise. They will sing a song of thanksgiving. They will sing a song of adoration into your, in, 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 in their mouth. And I pray that this week, O oh God, you will do something new. That eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard. That has not even entered into the heart of man. You will reveal what you are doing in this season into their life. Thank you, dear Father. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, 
His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you and see you on Wednesday. Bye.